So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can use green screens inside Final Cut Pro. So here in my timeline I've got a clip of me standing in front of a green screen and then underneath it I have these clouds which I wish to superimpose myself onto. So the first thing we'll do is crop out the sections of the screen that haven't got the green screen in them. So we click the crop tool here and we can just click and drag to crop out those portions of the image. Actually we can be a bit more aggressive with this since I'm quite stationary in the frame. If we find the position where I'm filling up most of this frame we can then crop in on both sides to ensure that we're doing the minimal amount of green screening possible. Crop down from the top as well. Drag through the clip to make sure that I haven't cut myself off. That's not always possible uh, if people are walking across the green screen or you've got a lot of people there, but it's always good to try and crop in as far as possible. It makes it easier for you in the next step. So we'll just click done. And now we actually need to remove that last bit of green. So if I select the clip and then click on the effects area and go down to the keying section, you can see there are two keyers built into Final Cut. The first is the standard keyer, which is a chroma keyer, so it'll work on green or blue by default, but I think you can also set custom colors in there. And then there's the luma keyer, which operates on um, the brightness of an image. So if you want to key out the white areas or the black areas of the image, you can do that with a luma keyer. But for today, we're going to use a keyer. If I hover over it, you can see it gives us a preview of what it'll look like. And actually it's done quite a good job already of keying out. So if I now drag and drop that onto our image, you can see that it's done a reasonable attempt at keying me out. The green is all gone, but what we're left with is this sort of patchy pattern on my black hoodie and on my hair where it's been a little too aggressive with how much it's keyed out. So how do we go about fixing that? Well, up in the effects area here, you can see that I've got a number of um, options inside the keyer plugin, and we'll be able to use those to refine the key. So first of all, um, there's this strength slider. And if I drag that down to zero, you can see that the green returns. So this is how strong the automated key was. So when Final Cut guessed what key you needed, that's that's what this strength parameter is. If we click here, we can see we've got three different view options. There's composite, which shows you what it looks like after the key. There's matte, which shows you what the key is actually doing. So if you imagine it like a cookie cutter, black is things that have been cut out and white is what's left. So the white section will appear in your composite and we see that it does. And you can see here that there's a bit of sort of patchy grey in the white and those are the areas here where the background's starting to shine through. And we can also click on the original. So if we want to go back to seeing what our green screen looked like, we click on the original here. So one of the first things you want to do when you're going through a green screen is to set the target green. Final Cut's already made a good guess, but we can use the sample colour tool here to click and drag on our image to select as much green as possible. So you're trying to include different shades here. So you can see there's a bit of a shadowy bit, a bit of a lighter area, and it goes darker here. You can do this multiple times. So if you've got multiple areas of green, you can click, create another one, click, create another one. This won't magically fix issues with your green in your in your video so if you've got hugely different variations you might run into problems but it does a pretty good job if you've done a reasonable job at setting up your green screen. So if we come back now to look at the combined and the map we can see it hasn't actually changed too much in our case. Uh, Final Cut had actually already done a pretty good job of identifying the green uh, and we are still left with this patchiness here. How can we go about fixing that? Well, if we come to the map view now and zoom in, we can see that patchiness in more detail. And we have the fill holes tool here, which does as it suggests, it fills holes in the map. So if I slowly increase that, you can see now 
that we've got solid white here, solid black here. And if I come back to my composite, you can see now we've got a nice clean composite. The background's not shining through. We also can't see any of the green. So that's a pretty, pretty good start already. Now the key tip here with the fill holes is set it as low as possible. You could fill it all the way up, which might not look like it's been a difference. But as soon as you have sections in your key that aren't entirely clear, like here where I cast a shadow on the background, you notice now that it's cut that out. If I take this back to the value it was before, which was about 0.2, you can see that it's preserved my arm and that this area here, although there is a little bit of patchiness, it's better than having that block there. So I always set fill holes to the smallest possible value. So that's already a pretty good job. Um, hopefully in most cases that sorted you out. There are a few extra things that you can do. So there's the edges tool here, which is designed for refining edges as it suggests. So you click and drag over your edge and then you have this slider here, which adjusts the edges. So you can see as I pull it towards it's starting to include more of my hair. It's making my hair transparent. And if I drag it away, it's making it more opaque. And we can see that if we go on our composite view, you can see the difference that's making. If you want to remove it, just click on one of the points and hit backspace and it's gone. Another thing you can do to improve your key is to use the light wrap tool. So what the light wrap tool does is it takes the color and the, the luma of the background and it starts to bring it into areas where you've got transparency. So around my hair. So if I increase that amount, you can start to see, if I take it all the way up, you can see how it's not like a blur, but it's like the light is leaking over my face. Obviously that's too strong. If you get the right amount of light wrap, it can really help to sell the idea that the person is in that location. There are plenty of other options inside this tool. I'm not going to go into them all today, but if you're having trouble, try having a dig through. You know, there's options here to select your color using a color wheel. If you're having issues doing it other ways, you can also refine the Luma selection. You have matte tools that allow you to directly manipulate the matte. Spill suppression is useful if the green of your background is starting to come through onto your, onto your face or onto the items in the key. And light wrap we've already discussed. So there we go. There's a quick, quick guide to keying in Final Cut. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, it's always useful to use this clouds as an example background because it's quite bright, so it tends to highlight issues like we had before. Um, if you are using a dark background, like these curtains, it tends to be a lot more forgiving, so you wouldn't necessarily have noticed that patchiness in my top on this background. So that's it. That's how you do green screen in Final Cut. Blue screen works pretty much the same way, and I hope you found this tutorial useful.